In this video, I'm gonna show you some simple skills to clone any plant. Now, almost all plants can be propagated either by splitting or by taking vegetative cuttings. Let's talk about the cuttings part first. Right before we begin, I should mention that you should have a pair of pruning shears or scissors and you need to sterilize them in alcohol first. That way we don't spread any bacteria. Now let's run over to our first plant. I'm going to show you several examples, but let's start with this Miss Huff Lantana. This is a great plant to propagate because there's no royalties being collected on it and there's no current patents. Come on in. Now what I like to look for on this type of plant is multiple stems coming off the base. Like check this out right here. Here's some soft new growth. It's coming off the woody stem. I don't like to take woody stems. I like, I like to take more of the soft tissue. And I like to get uh, several nodes involved. So if you look right here, there's one set of nodes right here. This is where the leaves are coming off and then another set right here. So I'm gonna take the cutting just below this set of nodes right there. Boom. And then what I'm gonna do, I can either pinch these off or cut them off. But I'm gonna cut right here, right here, right here, right there. I'm even going to take these right here because we don't need them and I'm going to leave these top little layers of leaves and right here we have three sets of nodes and this is what's going to produce roots along with part where I just cut at the bottom. I think I spot another plant with multiple stems that we can take some cuttings off of. Follow me! All right, what we have here is Swedish Ivy. This is another royalty free plant. Come on in now, let me show you very closely. Look, I just grabbed a random stem. Look, if you look at plants, you start to see a pattern. Here's the stem. It's kind of soft, this is new growth. And then here's the sets of leaves, AKA nodes. If you look real closely between this leaf, this node is already producing some new growth. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut right down here, right below. Here's our cutting. And we're going to go ahead and remove the leaves. Boom. We're going to take this one too. These also. We're removing everything so we have a clean little stem. And then that, that right there is perfect. Look, again, we have one, two, three sets of nodes. Two would be fine three is even better. All right, now just beside the uh, Swedish Ivy, here's some sedum, come on in. Now I don't like to take uh, cuttings that have blooms at the top. That's gonna steal all the energy and moisture and it's gonna make it hard for the cuttings to root. So here's a better example. Here's a stem, has no blooms at the top. I'm gonna clip it down here and voila. One, two, three, four. And then I might even take these because they're not necessary. All you need is a one or two leaves at the top for photosynthesis. And if you feel like the leaves are too large at the top and they're stealing too much moisture, you can even cut them in half like this. Now here's an example of another cutting that we just took. Look, follow me, you can do this with anything. Look, come over here. Look, here's a boxwood, okay? All I'm gonna do, look at this, another pattern. All I had to do, pull that off, that off. I'm just pulling these leaves off. This is where the roots will produce. And we have another cutting. Want another example? Follow me. All right, here's a shrub called dog hobble. Come on in. This is a shade shrub, evergreen. This is a native plant to our state. Just took a cutting off. One, two, three, four. Now look at that, that quick. That will stick in soil and it will actually root. All right guys, one more example of a vegetative cutting. Follow me. All right, up here we have a Nepeta and if you wanna come on in now, I'm not going to take a cutting that has blooms on it. I'm going to go for this one because it's just foliage. And then if you look really close, you can see the nodes. Now the nodes is not technically these leaves actually. It's the little tiny node, the leaves right there in between. Again, 
taking these off. I got all these cuttings. Now you're probably saying, well, what do I do with them? Well, right here, I have some rooting powder from Fertilom. Uh, there's lots of rooting powders out there. They all work pretty good. There's powders, there's liquids. I typically use a powder. You don't have to have rooting powder at all. It's just a hormone that helps speed up the process. So here's my cutting. Come on in. I poured it out in a separate container. Never dip your cutting straight into your original can. That way you don't contaminate anything. But what I'm gonna do is just toss this around like a, like chicken in a bowl of batter. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And after I get the nodes and everything covered, I should probably be wearing gloves, but I'm not. I'm gonna stick it down into the soil. This is just a cell pack right here. And as you can see, we're just gonna stick them all the way down up to where the top two leaves are. <laughs> Now pretty quickly after you have your cuttings installed, you want to go ahead and get them wet. Always keep your soil consistently moist. You never want to let your cuttings dry out. They're a lot like babies and they're delicate. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and soak this down pretty good. And I go back and forth several times to really make sure I penetrate the soil all the way down. If you don't have a hose or if you could get a hold of a saucer, this is gonna be game changing. All I'm gonna do here, let's say I haven't uh, soaked the soil, let's say I had dry soil, I would just set it on my saucer and then I would fill up the saucer. And then it would actually wick up the water from the bottom up and it would keep this whole thing uh, moist as long as I kept the saucer full. After about 15 or 20 minutes, that's probably enough time for the soil to soak up the water. So I would dump out any excess water and then I would just keep an eye on it. When the soil starts drying back out, you could fill your saucer up again. Uh, if you are putting cuttings in a cup, you could use this kind of saucer. These are readily available at pretty much any garden center. One thing you can also do to speed up the process is make a little dome. This will really create a humid environment inside and it'll also speed up the process because it'll keep things moist and more warm. And before you know it, you'll have roots. Now, if you don't have uh, this set up here, what you could do, let's say you're getting cuttings in a cup, you could use a Ziploc bag. I did it in a hydrangea uh, cutting video and I showed you how to use a Ziploc bag as a humidity dome. And this is just an extra measure to speed things up. It's not 100% necessary. All right, so I got my little terrarium. Don't put this in full sun. This would absolutely cook these cuttings. If I were at home doing this, I would probably put them in a windowsill or a shady area outside. Here's some nepeta we rooted about three weeks ago. I just did it in a plain old plug tray, no humidity dome, nothing special, no saucers. All we did was keep these consistently moist. Now, when a cutting is first put into a tray, it can only absorb uh, water through its leaves. So that's why you gotta keep it consistently moist. It's, it doesn't have any roots to absorb. But as you can see here, we rooted a lot of Nepeta. Never just try to root one cutting. Do lots of cuttings because that are, that's gonna up your chances of success. Again, these are about three weeks old and I'll pop one out and show it to you. And as you can see, we got some nice hairy roots. Now this thing is ready to go into a container and if I wanted to, I could even get more cuttings off the cutting. Now you might be wondering, don't you put cuttings in water too? Well, not all cuttings, especially woody ones. I would stay away from water with woody cuttings. Most uh, house plants, the aeroid family, like pothos, philodendron, CZ plants, these do really, really great uh, rooted straight in water. And I'll show you an example with this pothos. So come on in. Now, you can clearly see the nodes on a pothos. See this little brown uh, node right here? That is just waiting to turn into roots, but it won't turn into roots until I make a cutting. Now, it's funny, plants are so smart. So as soon as I do that, it's like it activates the nodes. So this node's what's gonna actually spread out and turn into roots. There's another one here. And just for the sake of fitting it in this water bottle I've got, I'm gonna cut these off. And as you can see, I've got three nodes right here just waiting to turn into roots. Now this is my specialty uh, rooting bottle. And I'm just gonna stick that down in there 
and I can clearly get two nodes down in this water, give this about a week, and this will turn into roots. So what about splitting plants that, you know, ones that can't be propagated vegetatively like I was showing you here. This is a Carex sedge grass. As you can see, it'd be pretty hard to get cuttings off of this. So all I'm gonna do, this is a pretty established plant already. Now I could probably do this with my bare hands. Uh, using a blade or a saw will help uh, do less damage to the roots. Uh, but as you can see, I'm just gonna cut in here I know it's scary because you think you're killing the plant and and the plants do need to be kept in a shaded area as soon as you do uh, split them or anything like this but these type plants usually come in clumps you can see how that one's kind of breaking off you can actually get several plants out of one and I'm just going to try to work that root ball without doing as much tearing the least amount of tearing as possible I'm kind of splitting it where it naturally wants to go. And as you can see, this kind of split off like, like I could root this, I could put this in a pot, pack soil around it, and that's a way to propagate. Um, I would definitely try to do some of these bigger pieces, I put in a pot like this, and then I would pack some potting soil around that and then keep it very moist that don't let cuttings or plants that you split dry out. They're in a kind of a critical stage after you split them and then I would put it in a shaded area until roots are able to grow. And the last plant I'll show you is this Creeping Jenny. Another name is Lysimachia. This is a very easy one to propagate. You could do it two ways. If you wanted a vegetative cutting, you could. You know, this has got nodes just like any other uh, plant we were doing. You just take these off. Now I could root just that. Or you could take it out of its container or if it were in the ground, you could dig this up. And you can split this also. You just want to gently massage these roots away from each other until you get some clumps to break out. Look at that. These are already got roots on them. I just split it. I'd put this into a pot. I'd pack potting soil around this. And again, keep it moist, not soaking wet, shaded area until it roots in. All right, guys, I hope after watching this video, you are now able to propagate any plant. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Until next time, become a plant person.